Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so in this week's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about my first tests in my anatomy course, and how they went, and what they were about, basically. Alright, so first things first, what are they? So these little tests are small tests that are worth about 3% of our final grade. And these tests are made up of images that came from the dissection theater. And uh, some structures are labeled in the picture that we got. And then we either need to identify, uh, say the function or something clinical about what we see in the picture. But I'm gonna go more in depth about that later with an example. So if you remember, this anatomy course that I have is part of a bigger course, which is human form and function which has two branches. So it has one branch of anatomy and one branch of physiology. So for anatomy, we had two spotter exams. That's how they're called, because you need to spot the structures in a, a dissection picture or um, something similar. So uh, we had two spotter exams. We're gonna have a third one in January, because if you remember my exams in January, due to COVID, everything got delayed. So uh, apart from that, we're gonna have uh, also one MCQ exam and one short answer question exam also in January. And it's the same thing for physiology. We had one in-course assessment, which was uh, this Wednesday, and it was at 4 a.m. So yeah, that wasn't all that much fun, but whatever. Uh, and then we're also gonna have SEQs and MCQs in the January exams. And if you remember uh, in my previous videos, I mentioned that uh, these courses last for the entire year. So this first semester is gonna be worth 40% of my overall mark for this human form and function module, which contains anatomy and physiology and then we're gonna have I guess a similar pattern of evaluation for the uh, winter semester so we're again gonna have uh, exams in May uh, but it's gonna be part of the same course if that makes sense so just add a little bit more detail for the physiology examination so uh, that was a lab exam so uh, it wasn't on the theory that we've seen in class I mean some of the things we've seen were, were overlapping obviously uh, but we had four labs so we had four uh, the first lab was uh, a histology lab, so we've seen all sorts of tissues, like whether it's epithelium, glands, uh, muscles, all sorts of stuff. Then second lab was about nerve conduction, so, you know, about neuro, and we've seen basically how nerve conduction works and how you can test the nerve conduction velocity. Then the third lab was about muscle function, so we've seen um, how, like, you know, the neuromuscular junction works and uh, how to test, basically, if uh, the, the transmission is, is normal. Uh, and then the final lab was hematology, so we've seen the different uh, blood groups, how to test uh, to see like which uh, blood group you are uh, with the resist factor and yeah, that's pretty much it. So the questions were related to uh, uh, those topics and yeah. So as you might have seen from this different background, I'm not uh, in my student accommodation anymore. I'm not even in Ireland anymore. I'm back in Canada for the Christmas period. Um, so uh, if you remember from my previous video, which I'm gonna link to uh, right here, um, we have two weeks of online teaching and now my first week is almost done. We're now Thursday when I'm recording this um, and you're gonna be seeing this on Saturday, hopefully. Um, so yeah, we have two weeks of online teaching, then we have our exams in January. Uh, we got the dates and the exam times finally and I'm so happy the exams are at noon Irish time. So that means that they're at 7 a.m. here. So which is perfect because that means I'm not gonna have to wake up at three or four in the morning um, to write those exams. So like, honestly, this is this is perfect really. And I guess it's really fair also for people from Asia or on the other, on the other side of the world, which uh, have the opposite uh, like time difference. So their exams are gonna be at like six, seven uh, in the afternoon. So that's great for you. That's fair for everyone really. So uh, I'm really happy about that. And then I'm gonna go back right after these exams because um, I'm probably gonna need to quarantine there too, unless they have these COVID test facilities in which uh, if you get two negative tests, you don't need to do the complete uh, quarantine. You only need to wait like for the test results. So um, that's something I'm gonna look into because it definitely sounds interesting. Um, so yeah, and then my official in-person start date for the winter semester is gonna be on February 1st. So yeah, that's gonna be great. And um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the courses are gonna like fall, they're gonna, you know, for your long courses. So uh, for anatomy, now we're gonna move into like the uh, inside of the body, if I can say, like in the in the thorax and the abdominal region. 
Uh, and then for physiology, the same thing. Now in anatomy, we did the musculoskeletal system uh, pretty much in, in its entirety, uh, I guess. We did um, uh, upper limb and shoulders, uh, pelvis and lower limbs. So, you know, that was great. Um, but we didn't do head and neck because we have a dedicated course just for that in second year. So that's going to be interesting. So yeah, um, this vacation is going to be pretty much city oriented. Um, I'm going to try to make some videos, you know, study with me and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed them. If you have any recommendations or want to see something specific or want me to talk about something, please write it down in the comment down below or send me a DM on Instagram at ov.med and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. All right then, so let me talk to you about the actual spotter exam and let me give you an example uh, of a typical question that you could get uh, on a hypothetical exam. So uh, I'm not allowed to show you any pictures or anything because, well, copyrights. But I can tell you about it since uh, other people in medical school might have similar exams. Uh, and so the type of question that you would have, you would basically have like four levels of question going from easy to hard. So um, the easiest question would be basically identify. So let's say I show you a picture, uh, or not me, but like the exam shows you a picture of the shoulder, okay? And then it's dissected, you don't have uh, any skin or anything, you only see the muscles, and then you have letter uh, A, let's say, on, on this muscle right here. So those who have done musical theory, they would know that this is the deltoid muscle. And so um, one question could be identify the muscle. So then you would say deltoid muscle. And the next question would be tell me its origin and insertions. So the origin, we know that it, it starts on the lateral one third of the clavicle, then lateral acromion and the spine of the scapula. So that's the origin. And then it inserts into the deltoid tuberosity on the humerus. So that would be a reasonable answer for that. And then you get into a, a bit of a harder question. You get to the either nerve supply, blood supply, or a function. So let's say for nerve supply, well, uh, we know that the deltoid is supplied by the axillary nerve. Uh, you can give the root values, I don't remember off the top of my head, but whatever. Uh, and then in terms of function, well, you know that the deltoid has three sets of different fibers. So you get the anterior fibers, the lateral fibers, and then the posterior fibers. So in terms of lateral fibers, what they do, they abduct the arm AB. So uh, they pull the arm away from the body. And then for the anterior fibers, well, they flex the arm and immediately rotate it. So that's this movement right here. And then for the posterior fibers, they're gonna extend the arm and laterally rotate it. So that would be like a normal example of a question uh, that you can get. You can also have uh, questions of like deeper dissections and they ask you like, what is this uh, vessel or what is this nerve and where does it start, where does it go? So uh, it's a lot of identification. And if you go into further um, stuff like clinical problems or stuff like that, uh, then you can talk about nerve impingement, uh, you can talk about, I don't know, like dislocation of the arm, uh, of the glenohumeral joint, you know, stuff like that. And that would be like a pretty good answer too. But usually in order to pass, you only need to identify and maybe origin insertion. So, uh, kind of a like more basic level of knowledge, but if you want to get into these higher grades, um, then you really need to go into, uh, you know, innervation, blood supply, function, clinical and stuff like that. But um, I guess it's fair enough because in order to get first class, which is like honors, basically like the best grade you can get, you need to have above 70, which might seem kind of low coming from North America. Uh, because me, myself, uh, having 70, I don't really consider that a good grade. Like, you're not going to get into medical school if you, if you have 70s. Um, there's my exceptions, of course, but from my previous experience, 70 is not a good grade. Whereas if you go over there at Trinity, 70 is like, oh my God, you have honors. Like, this is amazing. This is like, it's a big deal. So, uh, and I've seen from the tests that I've done that the marking is really hard. Um, you need to know a lot more than what they just show you on the slides. You need to do research on your own. So that's why the grade to get first class is so low but in order to pass, you only need 50. So I guess that's okay. And I mean, now once you're in medical school, the grades don't really matter, at least in your preclinical years. Um, they don't really matter for residency. They're not gonna look at them all that much to my knowledge, at least. They're more gonna look at letters of recommendation and grades you got on your clinical rotations more than um, like your preclinical years, if that makes sense. So you basically only need to pass all your courses and that's it. So 
Yeah, so it's just like a different perspective. Yeah, so for them, a good grade would be like in the 60s, something like that would be like very good. Whereas here, if you get in the 60s, you like barely pass. You're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do with my life? You know, so it's really different, but then you just, I'm getting used to it. And yeah, that's just how it goes, really. All right, so now then, final topic of this video, how did I study for these anatomy exams? Uh, well, now we're doing the musical schedule system and I'm kind of a visual learner, so I like to watch videos, I like to watch uh, people like showing the muscle and explaining them. Uh, here at Shinji, we have like some excellent resources. Uh, for that, we have Aquin's uh, videos. I don't know if anyone of you know. Um, I cannot show you, obviously, but uh, basically they have like dissections and they show you like muscles by layer. So that's extremely useful, you know, just to visualize like the insertions. Uh, they even show you like movements and functions of uh, the different muscles like through the layers. Um, and yeah, that's just an extremely good resource. And then what I use also is like um, Netters or Grey's Anatomy. Um, these books are really good. They have a lot, a lot of detail, which sometimes can be overwhelming when you're just trying to study like the basics, like origin and insertions of muscles. So. Uh, it might seem a bit rough at start, but then you have all sorts of other resources like Teach Me Anatomy, uh, which is an app. Uh, it's more about the basics, so that's great if you're just getting started. Um, YouTube videos, really, like, they're really good. I mean, don't underestimate that. Um, then obviously the lecture slides and the material that we get from the lab, so that's obviously a great resource. So I guess it's just a mix of uh, everything, like uh, how I study for these exams. Um, then I don't draw structures. Uh, I know that some of my colleagues uh, and friends like to draw the muscles. Um, never tried, I don't know, it seems a bit time consuming. Uh, in my personal opinion, I'd rather just like uh, write out the, like actively recall what are the origins, insertions, the innervations, and just write them out out of memory and then just practice that all over again without looking at my notes and then, you know, comparing with um, the answers. So. Yes, that's how I study. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be it for this week's video. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram at ob.men. Uh, if you didn't see my last week's and my previous week's video, please click here. I'm gonna link to them um, right there so you can go and check them out. And thank you for watching.